Hey, how's it going, everyone? I haven't made a video in quite a long time, so I figured today would be a good time to do it. Now, I am a big fan of the Ryobi tool line, and recently they introduced this 150-watt inverter that you can plug into your 18-volt batteries, and it can basically turn it into a portable power bank and or very, very simple inverter for running, like say, something like lights or maybe a fan. Um, but I've seen a few videos on it that have been discussing this thing, the rattle. Now, this rattle is actually nothing to do with the product being defective or being broken. It's quite simply just the reset button, because if you, if you realize the button is in there really loose. So if I'm rattling it like that, you can hear it, but as soon as I put some pressure on the button and stop it from, from rattling, Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So your product isn't broken, this is just this button that you're hearing making that sound. And also, another thing to note, this product, for some reason, is the only Ryobi tool or Ryobi product I've ever seen that actually has Phillips screws for taking it apart. As you can see, these are, these are the screws that are in a part in my dirty ass nails, but a working man's kind of what you get, so. But... Every other Ryobi tool uses these weird, um, these Torx, Torx security bits. I think they're like T20s. But, um, that's what every tool uses. They use, in their 40-volt line, in their 18-volt line, in their chargers, in their, their drills, in their batteries. They use it in everything. But for some reason, this is the only tool I have seen that uses Phillips screws. Which would, and also non-security at that. So I'm assuming the reason why they have them... Phillips is said they can be serviced, usually by like just the person that owns it. So I'm assuming, once we take it apart, and we are going to take it apart, that there is going to be either a type of fuse inside, like an AGM fuse, or not an AGM, like an a automotive fuse, that is uh, as a basis of their safety, uh, as the the circuit, like the, the protective circuit in here to keep the people from screwing it up. So we're going to take it apart together. Um, and then after after this, we're going to put it back together, and then we're going to test it. So, taking apart the clamshell, you've got this little... Ooh, that's a cute little fan. You've got this little fan. Here's the header. I'm going to do that. Let me pull that off really quick. This is discharged. I haven't ran this for a while. The battery's been dead. So, we do have this cute little fan. No name, of course. Young Lin. Never heard of them. Uh, DC brushless fan, of course. It's a core, it's a, a watt and a half, but that's what's providing the uh, the air that's going to be coming in here to actually cool the circuitry in here. And here is the circuitry. 12 volt, I mean, the 18 volt comes in here. 18 volt, uh, the discharge, and at more of the discharge range of the battery, 24 volt nominal, or 20 volt. So there is the... Uh, part of the circuitry. I'm assuming that, which is a, if I can get it up a little closer, eh, everything goes flying. If I can get this board up a little closer, that is a, if you can see that, KA, KA 7500C. So I don't actually know what the data plan, the data sheet of that is. But you can see the, what is that? That's the negative, the negative volt, the negative rail running over here. Into what I'm assuming is going to just be a, f a few bunch of passives, onto this which couples. Oh, there you go. What did I tell you, fuse right there, which couples to which is also which is kind of stupid because it's not actually user serviceable. It's hardwired right into the board. That's kind of a pain in the ass. But there's this MOSFET, which I'm assuming there's two of them. I'm assuming maybe push-pull going to this transformer. This is going to be part of the boost stage. There's a little daughter board right here. With uh, removable pins, by the way, this entire thing can pull right out. Because you can see there's the header, the pin header right there. So if I wanted to, I actually could just pull this board right off, which is nice. I'm not going to though. I don't. I don't want to. 
I don't want to screw this board up, but... And this is also... This does have a floating neutral, obviously. There's, it's a t completely insulated tool, unless you were to try to ground it yourself. But they do bother putting a ground on it, and I'm assuming that ground is probably running right to the neutral side. Um, where's the neutral wire? So, yeah. And there's the LEDs, because it does have a light on it, too. A few really, really chunky-looking diodes. And a Texas Instruments 555 timer. Would you look at that? And LM35-8. So they actually are using name brand components in here, which is nice to see. Uh, with the exception of this one. Which I'm assuming is going to be the, the main little processor that runs everything. But not entirely sure. Not too well versed in uh, circuit design in terms of uh, boards, but that's just me. So let's go ahead and reassemble this really quick, and then we'll try doing some testing. Now, this is going to be unedited because magic of YouTube, I can't, uh, I can't edit videos, especially with the um, not having a computer and all makes it a pain in the ass. So we're just gonna be doing it this way. That's where that goes. That is where you go. Come on. That's where you go. It better be where you go. It's not fitting in there, right? Hmm. Hmm. All right. Let's try this way instead. That seems nominally better. I believe that the uh, the fan header, yeah, it was on this side. So we're gonna plug that right back in really quick, and then stick this board in. So yes, if this unit does not work properly, just keep in mind that there is a 25 amp mini uh, mini fuse in there, an auto an automotive mini fuse. So. They're, they're, that'll probably be your smoking gun, if anything, that's tied directly to the positive rail, as you can see right there. So that goes right to the positive rail, through, across, to this, to the gate, or no, the source of this MOSFET. You can see that big, beefy current track right there. And then the transformer for the boost stage, yeah, so. And there's, there's two, there's four... MOSFETs right there. I should have done that video. Before. We should have recorded that before my stupid ass uh, put it back together. But there's these four MOSFETs which are part of the the boost phase, which I'm assuming. Let's see if we can fit that back together. So yeah. So there haven't been very many videos of people actually testing this thing to its limit or seeing exactly what it can run. So that's what I'm intending to do. Give me one second. Let me put this on here. This is really terrible video manship, but you know you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do, and this is how I'm doing it. So, well, actually, before I do that, interesting little thing I just noticed with this lens that they use for the light is that they've got this light piping effect going on. The light comes out the front right there, but the way they have the back of this directed is just to direct the light up this little channel you can see right there and they have a 45 degree angle in that channel right there to act as a mirror to reflect the light coming out front which goes to those LEDs which are facing directly down right there so we'll put that on there and then we will just slap this together so they do have a fuse which is what I had assumed which is ah uh, great Where's that at? Ah, there it is. Well, I don't have very much else to say <laughs> as I'm trying to put this stupid thing back together. And I know that this lights up, but I don't see any LEDs. Oh, there they are. There are some LEDs down there. You can see it right there, right 
they're gonna read the button. Put that together. Snap. The only way you get to, the only thing that you have to do that's destructive to this take it apart is either take the sticker off. The sticker's just right there. Which I've just left off. So I will put one screw in it. Just to keep the the biggest bigger stuff together. And then we will test it out. And I've yet to pop the fuse on this. I will tell you that. I have tested it to a point where it will shut itself down, but I have yet to pop the fuse, which is good. So there is this device does maintain some level of intelligence in that it won't let you screw it up. The fuse is quite honestly probably the last ditch effort or the last the last weak intentional link in the chain to protect itself. But I've yet to break that. So so here we go. We're gonna be plugging this in. Just like that. Make sure it still fires up, which it does. Green light comes on. So we're gonna check the voltage that comes off of this. I'm assuming, because I checked it last time, that's still 124. So it's not a perfect voltage. 121, okay. There we go, you can see it's kind of creeping up. So 121 volts. So the the circuit is kind of overshooting. There is, this is an inverter, it's a modified sine wave inverter. Anyone who says it's not is absolutely full of shit. If you put this on a, on a, just a transformer, like a small 5 volt transformer, directly into the, into the, the output of the, of the actual inverter, and you hook up the 5 volts just to like a speaker, you can totally hear the different tone that it creates versus if you were to plug that into 120 volts. Basically a, uh, a very, very ghetto oscilloscope that's just all you know, factored in auditorily, but we have 121 volts, modified sine wave, so I'm going to be plugging this into my Variac, and we will be able to hook up a load to it and control it, and we can actually watch the amount of watts that are going into it and see at exactly what point does this thing trip out and refuse to power anymore. And yes, this is a... This is going to be a little weird for the, uh, the Variac, considering uh, it's basically being powered by really shitty DC current right now. But I have a 200 watt General Electric LiPo, which I got when I was with my fiance, because you don't find these very easy anymore, especially in that wattage at 120 volts. Most of them like to play that uh, rough service game where they rate them actually at 130 volts. Which is kind of a pain in the pain in the ass. Ooh. All right, so we have 122 volts going into the Variac right now, and I'm going to slowly ramp it up. And I know for a fact that this inverter can't power this, but we're going to see at exactly what point does it trip out and stop and stop trying to power it. So we only got five watts going in. That's just five watts of loss through the transformer because. This is modified sine wave. Normally, when you have a transformer hooked up normally to just 120 volts, I haven't seen it actually register even on this because of the reactive power coming back. But we're going to start turning it up and get a good shot so you can see everything. It's a four and a half watts. There we go. Start bringing it up. Light is just now starting to glow. 43 watts, 50 watts, 60, 70, 80, 120, 30, 140, 150. So that's its rated capacity, just about. I'm going to step it back down just a little bit. So there is about, it, about its rated capacity. So now we're going to go over that. I'm only sitting at about uh, 85 volts, 80 volts, because this thing is rated for 110 volts, and I'm running it off of 120. So we're at about 80 volts on it right now, or no, 90. So it's at 150 watts, so that's really weird. There you go. Light's getting bright. 
Let's see how much we can go over for our trips. 160, 170, 180, oh, 190, and there it goes. So at exactly 200 watts, this gives up. It's it's not going to power any more than that. But you, as you can see, it is still running. So the fuse didn't blow in it, because as we've seen, the fuse goes directly across the positive rail to the boost circuitry and to everything else. So we know that if this was to completely die and not turn on at all, check the fuse, because that's most likely what's wrong with it. That's got some weird banding effect. I don't know if you can see that. It was almost like the light was going on and off. But that's... Basically, the Ryobi 150-watt uh, inverter, 18-volt inverter. That's just our look around. Thanks for watching, guys. Comment, rate, and subscribe. You really don't have to, but it helps me out a lot, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.